Hi, this is Matt with iGoFigure Software. Today we're going to cover an employee quick start guide. This is primarily for OsteoStrong employees or owners or managers who are getting introduced to the idea of the uh, iGo360 software to give them an overview of the very basics that they're going to be using every day, including how to uh, clock in and clock out with the time clock feature, how to schedule first time appointments and recurring appointments, and how to sell memberships. Also give a little brief overview of the program and how it looks, but primarily we're going to be focused on those three areas so that you can get through a typical day and easily 90% of the things that you're going to have to do in the iGo360 software. So first things first, when you become set up in the program, you'll receive an email that will have a hyperlink to this login, osteostrong.igofigure.com. That's where you go to log in. Use your email address. You'll be sent a temporary password. Simply paste in the temporary password and scroll down through the EULA and um, set up a new password, and then you'll be off and running. When you log in, you'll be presented with an option to launch the welcome screen or to just simply log into the club tier. Log into the club tier, and it will take you here. This is how it lays out. Generally, you have a member attendance panel over here, and so as members scan in throughout the day, their picture will be here. If you take the picture, some centers take pictures, some centers don't, so it just depends on whether you're one of those centers. The folks who've scanned in for the day, they'll appear down here below the sign-in button, and then just simply click that name, we'll pull up that member's record, the staff scheduled for the day if that's utilized, and then big buttons across the top that take you to different areas of the program. As an employee, you're never going to mess with settings, really have little use for reports or the CRM, but instead will be spending most of your time in the member, prospect, and schedule area of the program. But first things first, when you first show up, you're going to want to clock in. And so uh, many centers use this feature. If you don't, one less thing you worry about. But if you do, you just simply come over to employee, click the time clock button, select your name from the drop down list, and click clock in. When you're ready to leave, you do the same thing except you click clock out. Simple as that. At the end of the week, your manager will print a timesheet, review those entries, make any adjustments if needed if you happen to forget to clock in or clock out, and you'll be good to go. Um, so that's it for clocking in and clocking out. The next thing that you're going to spend lots of time doing is uh, it's scheduling appointments. And here is where the schedule, re scheduler resides. It's under the schedule button. You simply click it and it will pull up the calendar for your center. Now, uh, it defaults to a week view to switch to a month view. Simply click month. You can use these buttons to scroll from the next month to the previous month. The same with the week view. You can use the buttons to scroll to the next week or the previous week. And if you want to go down to the day view in week mode, you simply click the day and the number and it'll display the day view. If you're in month mode, you simply click the number and it will jump you down into the day view uh, as well. So we're going to start with the week view. Now, you're going to be scheduling first-time appointments. People are either going to call in, there's going to be an event at the center, you may be having a coffee at Starbucks and have the calendar pulled up on your phone and meet somebody who needs to schedule an appointment. Point is, is that it's easy, you can literally do it from anywhere. Um, from your phone, you can log in and access this calendar or you can just simply do it at the center. That's where it's going to occur most of the time. And so we'll just have a look at how that's going to work. Here's how the scripting works. So let's just assume that you're going to be scheduling a first time appointment and somebody calls in. Hey, I heard about OsteoStrong, it's great. Let me sign up for a first time appointment. I wanna learn what it's all about. So you go through your scripting and then you ask the question, which do you prefer, mornings or afternoons? By simply asking that question, you'll be able to drive the appointment to the area of the calendar that makes most sense. And so if you're too busy on a particular morning or perhaps it's not busy enough, not enough energy in the center, you prefer not to have them come in or it just depends on the staffing of the center. But by simply asking that question, do you prefer mornings or afternoons, then you could guide them to a morning or afternoon that works best by your schedule. So let's just assume that they say, oh yeah, well mornings were great, super. How does Thursday morning work for your first time appointment? Oh, that's great. How does 10 o'clock? Super. Alrighty. All you do is double click the time 
10 a.m. under first visit. This is for their first appointment. Then it brings up the scheduling module. Now, when a person is calling in for the first time, they are not going to be set up in your system. This system is designed to pick up and manage a member from the point they schedule their first appointment. So the way that's going to work is, is you'll have two options here. One, you can schedule a task, which is just another name for an appointment, or you can schedule a new prospect task. Now, a regular task will allow you to enter the name of a person who's already a member of your center, or in this case, it's a new prospect task, and it gives you name, email, and phone fields to enter for the new person that's now being added to your prospect list and to your calendar. So it's quite simple. You just type in their name. We'll type in George Bush. We got nothing but A-listers or B-listers, depending on who you are, at this center, and we'll type in his email address. And say, okay, sir, what's your email address? Uh, great. Uh, let me go and get that in. And can I have your phone number, please? And they'll say, super, here's the phone number. And then you say, okay, I've got you down and confirmed for a first-time appointment, Thursday, March 7th at 10 a.m., at this point, you're going to select orientation first appointment. Your other options here are tour or second visit or appointment. Now, the online tour button is one that people are going to schedule from their, your public calendar, which your center has and may or may not use. Those show up as a different color on the calendar, so you know what they are. The consultation second visit is also a different color, and it's shorter because... It's just a shorter duration appointment. And then the last one is appointment. That's for recurring appointments. But in this case, it's a first appointment, so you just select that. It's going to default to an hour in duration. The other options on here are result. Well, they haven't showed up yet, so you're not going to be checking that off. But when they do, you'll come in and you'll put completed for that. You also have a chance to put some notes in here. So he ha has a dog named Billy or whatever you want to put in there. So you can put a note that might indicate osteoporosis or whatever it is that you might find important for that, uh, that member. And then you simply check email reminder and email SMS message to the member. And you say, that's it. Tell the lady or the gentleman that's called. We'll be sending you a text and email confirmation of the appointment, and the day before the appointment, we'll be sending the same reminder. Thank you and have a nice day. Click, you hang up, and you've just gone through the process of scheduling the first appointment. That no data message popped up because this is a test database and I haven't put any actual messaging in that text message, so it's just giving me a warning about that. Nothing you need to worry about. So what happens now is now they're on the calendar. That's it. That's as easy as it can get to schedule a first-time appointment. Now stuff happens, so they may call in at some point and say, hey, I'm not able to make that. Can I schedule it for later in the day, say 1 o'clock? You say, sure. Here's how you move it. You simply click it, click it, drag it, drop it, and it's rescheduled. That's it. It's now updated. If you're in week view and they say, oh, I need to go over to a different day, we look at the name on the appointment. Notice when we're hovering over it, the note we have appeared. He has a dog named Billy. He goes, can I come in Friday instead? You Sure, that's fine. You just click it, drag it, drop it. It's rescheduled. It's smart enough to know you want to keep it in that same column. Note that the appointment's pink. That's what's defined by this. Your club may, manager or owner may have changed that color, but that's the default for these. And that's it. They're scheduled for the appointment. Now, on the day of the appointment, when they come in, you simply double-click the appointment. You select they've come in and mark it as completed. Click save, and you're done. Okay, now why would you want to do that? Great question. I'm glad you asked. We look at this calendar. This is just test data. What happens when an appointment comes and goes and the time is passed for that appointment? The appointment actually turns red in color. That's a cue to you to let you know that person didn't show up for their appointment. Give them a call. Let them come in. Or it might be a cue to you to let you know that that person, you forgot to check them off as a completed. So at the end of the day, you're going to look at that. And you're going to see some red appointments. You're going to, oh, yeah, that person came in. I just forgot. You can just literally click on that one and mark it as completed, and the color will change, and you will be good to go. Uh, one thing I wanted to note is that the email to reminder and SMS reminder to employees is usually pre-checked. And so that is, um, that's something that uh, you won't have to check whenever that comes up. So that's it for scheduling a first-time appointment. That's, uh, you're going to be doing that multiple, multiple times a week. Just get comfortable with it. 
when you schedule that, know that the text and email reminders are going out as indicated. The other thing that happens is that person is now created, it's created a prospect record and their name will appear over here in the prospect list. And so you'll get to use that data later when you're converting them to a member. Okay, now the second thing that's gonna happen is that person's gonna come in and they may say, okay, well, that was great, but I'm not so sure yet. Can I come in for a second free appointment? And usually say yes. The advertising is generally geared towards two free sessions. And you say, sure, no problem. Let me go ahead and schedule that for you. Like mornings or afternoons, do the same thing. Double click the calendar. And uh, this time, the person's already in there as a member record. So we don't need a new prospect task. We just select task. And then you start typing their name, and this one was George Bush, so we start typing G-E-O-R. You see how it narrows the list down? Then you just check that person's name. They're gonna be assigned to the column, first visit, and you're going to select this time a consultation, second visit. And it may be a shorter duration, they usually are. And then if they, if they wanna email an SMS receipt, again, these will usually be pre-checked and you click save and close and you're done. So that was again the same warning that we had before about the data, but we know it's in there. This one shows up as a second visit, it's a different color. And so when you're looking at your calendar of things that are coming up for the week, you'll see the different color points. Okay, I got a second visit that day and a first visit that day. Okay, that's it for first and second visits. Um, you can edit those by moving around as I suggested. You can also double click it to edit the date on that if they need to move it to a different day. You can just select the day that way. Easy enough. Okay, now, now's time to schedule the recurring visits. You're gonna be a rock star. Everybody that comes in, you're gonna sell them a membership, so you're gonna go through the membership sales process, which we'll show you in a minute, and then they're going. it's gonna be time to schedule the recurring appointment. So you're gonna say, thanks for joining, and go through the scripting to set their expectation to come in once a week at the same time and say, okay, great. What works better for you, mornings or afternoons? Same question as before. This gives you control over the schedule. They say they like mornings. Well, you can see over here you're stacking your morning appointments on Thursday. So that's good. You want to be consistently busy throughout the day. So you're like, oh, okay, super. How about Thursday morning at 10 a.m.? That sounds great. Great. All right, I'm going to get you down and schedule for that. So all you do is you double-click the calendar, and then you select task. And this is going to be a person that's already in there. So you just start typing their name, George Bush, going to be assigned a recurring appointment. We come over here and we select appointment. Okay? This one's going to be auto-recurring. It's going to be 10 minutes long. We're going to set it for weekly. And we're going to leave it as no end date. Okay? So the point is, is that you want to have them block out that same period of time, the same day, same week for forever, as long as they're a member and then you're good to go, okay? So that's really it. We're gonna leave this blank and that's gonna leave it blocked out on your calendar for a whole, forever. I think it only goes out like a year, but then it auto-populates after that. I'm gonna cap it at, a, at, at, a, at just a couple of months here just to show you what it's gonna look like on the calendar. And then we're gonna click save and it's gonna be good to go. Now I think it's gonna give the same the tip. We need to go put some data in there for this test database. But now you see George Bush has an appointment on the calendar and it's recurring every day on the calendar. I show more and there it is. Okay. I got them in here a few times, oh, just the one time. Okay. Now it's the same exact thing when it comes to rescheduling the recurring appointments. Uh, George may say, call in and say, hey, I want to schedule to a different time it's just drag and drop the difference here is it'll ask you do you want to reschedule just this one or every single one in the series well we just want to reschedule this one so we update it and the email and text reminders that George receives will be updated to reflect the new time okay that's it for scheduling that is a lot of what you're gonna do but it's really super easy to use within the system so don't be afraid of it that's the way it's gonna work now you're a uh, manager or a owner may also use the Team OsteoStrong section. That's really just a place to leave sticky notes for other employees. And so, for example, we may be on a week view, and we're like, okay, I want um, somebody to clean the windows that day. So you just simply double-click it. We're going to select a task. Most centers, 
Um, we'll have a uh, you know some kind of a test member set up like Team Osteo Strong or something like that, and they'll just assign all of their notes and appoint you know notes to that one dummy member. And so you just write a note and include what it is that you want to do. Clean the windows, for example, and then you just save it and it's good to go. Okay, so it'll appear, it'll be green on the calendar. So if you come in one day and there's a green note on there, you simply hover over it. Oh, okay, clean the windows. And what do you do when you're done? You double click it and then you select completed. And so at the end of the day, it won't be in red reminding you that it's going to be done. Another key feature about the recurring appointments is that there's another video that explains how to assign those Spectrum key tags to the members when you're entering them into Spectrum and how to assign those uh, OsteoStrong tags to the members when they're so they can scan into your center. Most centers have the RFID scanner at the front desk, and so all the member needs to do is wave their tag over that, and they're scanned in, and they'll appear over here in the attendance panel. When they do that, that automatically checks them off for their brown recurring appointments. So that means at the end of the day, they won't have turned red, okay? Or if they do, that means they forgot to scan in or they just didn't show up. And if they're a no-show, that's when you're supposed to call them to come back in, okay? Now, on occasion, a uh, member's going to cancel. Members cancel, it happens. And so we're going to teach you how to do the cancellation. There's a cancellation process. You just click the red X in the member record, and the membership agreement is canceled. It'll confirm, and then you're done. But then you'll need to remove the appointments from the calendar. That's pretty easy. You just come over to George's appointment and you double click it to open it, to edit it. And what do you do? You cancel the appointment. Simple, you just mark it as canceled and then you update all recurrences in the series. And that means all of the appointments and on the calendar will be canceled and removed from the calendar. So we see George's appointment disappeared there. And he's now no longer on any, of, any other day in the, on the calendar. That's it for managing the calendar. You got this, super easy. Couple of tricks on that, just remember, mornings or afternoons, the first part, when you're having a big event in the center, make sure you man the front desk and have the owner, whoever's speaking, announce to schedule their first time appointment so they can come up to you to schedule their first time appointments. You'll do great. Now the second thing I'd like to show you is how to sell a membership, okay? now. Keep in mind that everybody that comes through the center most likely, just about every time, is going to have entered them and been entered as a prospect. Okay, so they're going to be over here in prospect records. We're going to take a quick look at that. George just came in as a prospect. We scheduled his appointment. Here's his information. This is generally what the record's going to look like. You've got a billing tab where you can look at some billing events. Sometimes you'll have prospects that come in who just want to pay for a single visit and you might sell them a single visit. Not often, but that's kind of the unusual thing that your manager might show you how to do if it happens a lot. And sometimes you might have a need to check their history. Oh, I want to look at the notification history of all the text and email messages that have gone out. You'll do that under the history tab. You can add notes here. That's this brown button. And as you, if you forget what they mean, just hover over them and the name of it will appear. And you can come in here and add notes to that person's uh, record. Uh, type whatever you want. They're usually good reference points to look at later just to make sure anything unusual is happening with a member. Just write a note about it, then other people in the center is going to know what's going on with that person. Other things, you can look at a list of scheduled tasks here, and you can change the status of this prospect. Now, the only time you're going to change the status of the prospect is they come in for the first and second visit, you don't close the sale, then you just change the status over to inactive. That's it. That's the only thing you need to do to manage the status of this prospect. We're going to leave George as new so we know that he's still good in the system. Okay. So now, what are you going to do? You just said, Matt, we're going to talk about how to sign up a member. We're talking about a prospect record. Well, sorry about that. I got distracted. You needed to see what it looked like. But once you're ready to sign them up as a member, you're going to be awesome and sell them, and they're going to want to buy a membership. So you're like, great. Let's sign you up. You click this little green button here with the guy with the red arrow on his chest. That's to convert to a membership. Okay. So you're going to convert to a membership, and that's going to bring up the member sign-up process as though you click this button here. Now, on a very rare day, you're going to have somebody come in who's not a prospect, and then you'll just start the sign-up process here 
and you'll be rekeying their name, be keying in their name and email and phone number for the first time in that process. But most of the time, it's just going to be a matter of grabbing a prospect record and converting them. And here's what you do: you're going to pick the plan category. It's going to be either membership or osteo plan, strong plans, whatever got set up by your owner. And then you're going to select core core or gold or silver, the types of plans that or the names of them are going to vary by center, but generally they're going to be a month-to-month -month membership with a sign-up fee and recurring monthly dues. All of this is going to pre-populate with the predefined pricing that you have. Here is an enrollment fee, which means a sign-up fee. They'll be paying that today. The membership dues is the membership dues that you're going to charge them on a monthly recurring basis. That's usually how that's set up. And then the dues at sign up is the first month's dues that you're collecting at sign up. Couple of key features about this. Start date is the start date of the membership plan. The next payment date is the next time they pay you. And these these are as described. Now the, this number here, dues at sign up, means that means they're paying you the first month's dues, but not exactly. What it is, it's, it's a calculation of dues between this date, March 5th, and this date, April 5th and it defaults to one month out because that's what it is. It's a month-to-month -month membership. Now, a lot of centers prorate those first month dues to the first of the month so that their billing is consistent, okay? Easy enough to do. All you do is you click this. You say, okay, we're going to be able to do it on the first of the month, okay? Another handy-dandy feature is we automatically prorate that for you. See how that changed to 155.90? That's going to be the amount of membership dues that you're collecting today. Okay, along with that enrollment fee. Then on April 1st, they're going to be paying you the full monthly dues of 179. So as you're signing it up, you just tell them this. Yeah, I'm only going to be taking a prorated amount of dues to uh, the 1st of April. That will be $155. Then on April 1st and every month after that, you'll be billed 179. Cool, cool, you're good. Okay, that's it. That's all you need to know. Now, on occasion, you're going to have somebody who's going to say, hey, what about my free week? I want to, I, I signed up for two free sessions, but because you're an awesome salesman, you sold me on my first session, I still want to get credit for my free week. Okay, easy enough. All you need to do is change this and say, okay, great, I'm going to have your membership officially start on March 12th instead of today, March 5th, okay? And I'm still going to prorate that amount down to April 1, so you're only paying through March 12th through April 1, so now you're only paying 115 to start today for the rest of April, okay? And then everything else is going to stay the same, all right? I'm going to leave this at March 4th for the remainder of this example, and I'm going to prorate to April 1st for the remainder of this example. Don't worry about that stuff. As we're checking out, you get a chance to check your work. You're going to be running that charge through, so you get a chance to review it before you run it through. Up here, you assign the salesperson, okay? If you have the source from, uh, you know, if they came in from a Bulletproof Coffee podcast or maybe a UPW lead or an X3 bar demo or whatever, try to remember to schedule, select the source because that's useful data later when you're trying to optimize your marketing and advertising budgets. Occasionally, you'll have a member that's referred by somebody yourself. Oh, Betty referred me. Okay, great. Betty referred you. Putting that down, it'll, that means her name will appear on a port report later so you can see who referred who. Okay, easy enough. Uh, default language you don't have to worry about always goes to the club language setting, which is English. If you're in Switzerland and they may have preferred a different language, you can have the option to change it there. But you're not in Switzerland. Uh, at least I don't think you are. You might be. Um, now you're going to be entering the member information. And so red dots are going to be required fields. Usually just the phone and email are required. This is a test club, and so a lot of that stuff's narrowed down. You have the opportunity to fill in birthday or address or any of that other data you might want to capture here. Um, other things that you might want to capture, I strongly recommend, are adding the emergency contact number. And if you want to take the picture, you just simply click the camera to take the picture. That'll activate the camera. Take the picture, save it, you're done, or you can upload an image, okay? Um, those are the main key features there. The next thing you do is you're going to schedule the set the, set up the, the payment method on file. file. And that's going to be a credit card or a bank account, whichever they prefer to give you. And so you just select that here and you select credit card. 
Now, with the system comes an integrated credit card swiper that you're, you're, you may or may not have bought. If you have one, you just simply click swipe card, swipe the card. Now it's going to read in the data and you're good to go. If you don't, then, or maybe you're out at an event and didn't bring it and using your iPad, you just simply type in the credit card number, select the card type and the expiration date and click save. If you're entering a bank account, then it's just a matter of clicking the bank account, you enter the bank data and click save, okay? In this case, I'm gonna select statement and what statement does is that actually sets it up to where your, your client is emailed an invoice on their due date uh, in the future, okay? Now, we recommend against that because it's kind of a hassle having to track down the members to get them to pay you, but um, you're gonna run into a member every now and then that just refuses to give you that kind of payment method, and so you're just gonna have to say, okay, fine, we're, we're gonna do it that way. Okay, so uh, many centers also charge a rate lock fee, and this is where you're gonna add the rate lock fee, okay? It's an additional service, an add-on, and so you got the big yellow purchase additional service. What a rate lock fee is, simply the member is signing up for the membership plan and they're gonna be paying a monthly payment. You'll have the right to raise that rate later, usually under the term of the contract or something that says we get the right to raise this rate at any time, but um, this allows a member to lock in the, their fee for life. And so in this particular instance, just tell them, hey, it's 39 bucks a year, we charge it on December 15th, if you don't want that, that's perfectly fine. You don't have to pay it, but if we raise our rates, you'll have to pay the new rate. Most of the time they say okay, and you say great, you click the purchase additional service. Your center may not offer that, and so if you're not, just, just ignore this part of the video and don't worry about it. If you do, this is how you do it. Select annual rate lock fee. It'll come up, the price is $39. Remember, dues at sign up is the amount of dues you're collecting at sign up. Well, we're not because it's zero, they're only going to be paying you the first time on December 15th. So you set this, the next payment, the start date is today, the next payment date is going to be December 15th, 2019. Remember to go backwards, not forwards. I was about to do 2020. Um, and then you assign the employee. And that's it, okay? So that's gonna be saved to the list of stuff that they're buying, and so now we're gonna save and check out. Remember I said there's going to be a spot where you can check your work, here it is. Okay, we got an annual rate lock fee. They're paying zero dollars for that now, but it'll pick up and bill them again on December 15th. They have membership plan sign up fee. That's $199. Okay, right there, good to go. And then the membership plans, you know, we remember we prorated that down because it's not the full month because we're charging on the first. So everything looks good. You did great. Now, what's gonna happen is if they put a credit card on file, there's gonna be a button right here that says charge count on file and email receipt. You can click that button and then you're done. If not, then you just click the checkout button, select your cash here, and then you're gonna add the payment method. So that might be a credit card, they may pay you in cash, um, get me out of the way here or a check or something else. They may say this happens on a very rare circumstance and I recommend you just don't get into it. But if they do say, well, hey, can I just go ahead and pay everything on the 15th, I get paid that day. Well, you wanna get the sale, so you say yes. Sure, I'm gonna put it on on account unpaid. Okay, I'll be charging you $389.53 on account. Sure, sure, I'm gonna set the payment schedule to one payment and I'm gonna put the due date of that one payment on March 15th and click save. Okay, that's done, that's it. We're gonna save it, we're done. It's made this payment schedule and it's going to mark them as an okay member that owes you money in the future. And that's it. And so there'll be actually a little column under that member record that says future due for that member, but you don't have to worry about it because it'll be scheduled out in the future. If you're finished, you can say, shoot you an email that receipt. Sure, click this button, email them a receipt, you're saving trees, thank you very much. That's it. Now that process, literally the first time you go through it, you're gonna go, okay, that's pretty easy. Second time, you're gonna own it, and then you're gonna be just signing them up. It only takes about a minute to get a member record entered into the system. This receipt prints and is good to go, and you're literally good to go. 
The other cool thing to note is occasionally you may have a member buy some supplements you might be selling or an X3 bar if you're an X3 bar center. All you need to do is come to the POS button in the member record, click point of sale, inventory items, select the X3 bar and click sell. It'll ask you to charge the account on file and then you'll be done. That's it. You now know how to schedule first time appointments, schedule recurring appointments, and take payments from your members. The last thing that's probably worth covering is, well, what happens if a member is a delinquent and they owe me money? Um, this test database doesn't have any, so I'll just kind of tell you how it's going to work. When that member scans in, not only is it checking them off for the recurring appointment, but their name's going to show up in red if they owe you money. That's your cue. Oh, hey, George, your payment failed last month. You got another credit card I can try to run that through? Now they may say, oh, you can just run my credit card on file. It's good. Or they might give you a different payment method. So what's going to happen is you're going to click their name. It's going to jump to their member record. You click the billing tab, okay? And they'll have an, a current amount due here. They'll say current due, whatever it is that they owe you. So at that point, it becomes pretty simple. You're just going to do what's called a get payment. Let me go into Jorge Clooney here because his is set up a little better, better for this. And so we're just going to do a get payment. Okay, get payment. They'll have the list of unpaid invoices. They'll total like $109. You click $109 and you click checkout. And it's going to look just like the checkout process we did before when we're adding the credit card. You add the credit card, click save and go. The only difference is, is there going to be a checkbox on there where you're going to be allowed to save that card for future payments. And just ask them, is it okay if I charge that card for the future payments? Sure, you click OK and you're good to go. That's it. You're dangerous. You now know everything there is to know about scheduling appointments, taking payments, and updating a failed payment method. You also remember, we're about done, so we might as well go ahead and clock out now. We clocked in as Gene. We're going to clock out as Gene and clock out log. Well, I probably got them log all my logins and logouts all messed up. When that happens, that's when you tell your manager, hey, I messed up on my time entry. They can go in and edit it. So... Anyway, so that's it for what you uh, need to do to get through the program. I hope this helps. If you ever have any questions or get stuck on this, ask one of your team members for help. That's part one. Two, there's a whole help menu under this question mark button that pulls up this directory of help topics that will take you through parts of that. There's other videos that have been going around that are on some playlists. One of them is how to enter Spectrum members. Um, another good one. And finally, if you need help, give us a call. Uh, you can email us at support at igofigure.com. I'll put that in the description of this video. You can also chat, chat with us. Just go to igofigure.com and uh, click the chat button to chat with one of our agents. And finally, you can give us a call. Our number is 877-GO-FIGURE, and tech support's available from 7 a.m. to 7 p.m. Monday through Friday Central Time. Thanks and good luck working at your at your center. Hope everything works great for you. Anything we can do at all for you, just give us a call. We're happy to help. You have a good day.